are watching us on Facebook now or later. Um, we're so sorry you weren't here this morning. I had such a delicious Jimmy breakfast. <laughs> so, for anyone who's ever guided or cared for or shepherded anyone, happy Father's Day because I think that's just all part of it. Um, maybe someday we'll have a combined happy family day. <laughs> The announcements are um, tomorrow, Juneteenth, so where the office will be closed. This week, um, Emily and Al are going to annual conference, so please keep them in your prayers. And um, a neighborhood announcement is the second Monday of each month, 6 p.m., Woodwood Recreation Center, there will be a Woodlawn Neighborhood Association meeting. So it's a great way to get out there and get involved in this wonderful neighborhood. And as the bulletin says, take a deep breath, let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let us worship God. It truly is a blessing to be with each of you this day, in this house, in this place, and wherever you are watching online. No matter who you are, where you come from, or where you're going, no matter what you believe or doubt, and no matter who you love, God loves you, and you are welcome here. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all of creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you will, please stand if you're able. Join us in the hymn of praise number 66, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Sharing these prayers from where you are and 
I will repeat them as best I am able, and then ask Lord in your mercy, and if you will respond, hear our prayer. Are there any prayers of concern or joy today? <clears throat> Mark. For the soul of Dorothy Cook. For the soul of Dorothy, Dorothy Cook. That was very. That was very. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, to my church family, I wanted to let you know that my brother, uh, who is two years younger than I am, and we grew up very close, his son died uh, during the night, Tuesday morning, suddenly and unexpectedly, and so the family is just heartbroken. So pray for Ron and Becky, his parents, and for the siblings and nieces and nephews. And for me, it's, it's been a tough week. Thank you. Prayers for the family of a nephew, a son, and a, a person lost to this beloved family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Prayers for, can you say those names one more time? I'm sorry. Barbara, what were their names? just kind of gone through a series of just unfortunate events that just kind of keep making her feel like she's climbing out of a hole and can't quite get grasp on the edge. So for her and for other people who feel like they can't quite get ahead. Prayers for Sandra, Sarah Randolph in particular, but also all those who feel that they are stuck and cannot get out of the hole that they find themselves in. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Fathers, fatherless, to be a father, trying to be a father, positive male influence people, all those people. Um, that today will be a success. Prayers for all varieties of fathers and all of those who mourn the loss of fathers and everything in between. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. I give thanks also for um, Marge's birthday this week, um, this past week, um, another year with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We 
these prayers before us, let us now sing together our prayer as we sing together, life giver, lover of us all, the boy that we end up that you'll find in your hymn, or in your, uh, the back of your view. <laughs>
we come to hear the scripture for today, let us reflect upon our own callings in our lives, the ways that we are called to do the work of God, the work of justice in our lives. Let us hear these words now, coming from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 3, 35, through chapter 10, verse 8, if you would stand for the reading. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw all the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, <coughs> and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the son, the one who would betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pay. Give without payment. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let us take a moment of prayer together. Gracious and most holy God, as we come to hear your word for us this day, embolden us to speak truth in all the avenues of our lives. Embolden us to be not merely those who are seen doing justice, but those who are unseen doing justice. Constantly in a ministry of presence and showing up in places for others. And allow at this time that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be pleasing to you. Amen. When I was younger, my father passed away. I was eight years old, almost nine years old, and he passed away from cancer. But one of the things that I hold on to most dearly about my father was his ability to always be there. It's something I don't take for granted now, because my father was a pastor, and now as a pastor, I know the schedule a little bit better. The calls that come in the middle of the night, the opportunities to be in meetings at 6 o'clock at night, the opportunities to be with people any time of the day, but no matter what, my father made time to be with me. One of the most inspiring things that he did was that he would take time in each night during the Beanie Baby craze to take all of my Beanie Babies and tell a story. These little stuffed animals became so meaningful to me because they were embodiments of these stories that my father would tell. And generally, the moral of the story was the same. You can do anything by the power of God. Anything is possible. You are capable of so much more than you think. 
It was inspiring for my young years, for my young heart. And when my mother was going through her beanie babies recently and going through all the different things from our childhood, she called and she was like, you want this, you want that, you want this, you want that. And then she got to the beanie babies. And I typically am the one to be like, you know what, if Philip wants that, Philip can have it, Philip's my brother. But when we got to the beanie babies, I'm like, nope, I'm one of those. <laughs> A reminder of the presence of my father even still in my life. It was a ministry of presence that my father did with me that the only reason you know about it is because I told you about it. And so many people experience this with so many people in their lives, whether it be a father, a mother, a some other name, I go by Palma with my pets. It is so much more than just what is seen, but it's the ongoing presence of being with those we love. Going out to dinner with a friend who's having a hard time. Showing up at their house with a fresh cooked meal to offer a Linda a helping hand during a difficult season. It's not the showiness of a commercial or the showiness of a TV program where a pastor is talking about prosperity or about how God will bless you if you just bless those who are in need. It is so much more than that. It is an ongoing need to be present. That is what my father embodied for me and so many. He was about justice in so many ways and set an example for my ministry still to this day. When Jesus talks to the disciples in this text about the laborers being few and the harvest being plentiful, it's not talking about numbers of people who show up and sit in the seats or sit in the pews on Sunday morning. It's the opportunities for justice to be done in our world. It's the opportunities for us to care for those who are lonely and forgotten, for those who have fallen and cannot get up and are not able to cry out for help and is showing up at that person's house regularly. For those who are in a hole who feel like they can't get out and is being there to offer a hand out when they can't find the ledge for themselves. It's being present with people in meaningful ways. This week I attended a training about um, humility, cultural humility. Instead of cultural competency or being competent to address the diversity of our communities, Magic City Acceptance Center's training focuses on humility and being open to the possibilities of how people might present opportunities for you to know them more deeply. And over and over and over again, what came up was this humility that's required in our service of one another and in the ways that we respect one another. What came up over and over and over again was this idea of mirror language, of meeting people where they are and reflecting back the language that they use for themselves or the language that they reflect for the world and being respectful to the ways that they present themselves. It's about being present, though, because the difficulty of that is if you don't know a person, if you don't really invest in that relationship, then it comes off as a shallow attempt. whether it be an attempt to get them to come with you to some place that you want them to go with you, whether it be church or otherwise. We have to invest in these relationships in meaningful ways. Jesus wasn't just talking about going, sending the 12 out and saying, here you go, this is going to be easy. The next verses that follow these that were read today are all about the coming persecutions. Jesus says at one point, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. 
Be wise enough to know when you are not welcome. He goes on to say in this text that if the place will not accept you, to leave and dust the, the, uh, the sand off of your feet and leave. He goes on to also say, when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. We will, there is, it is impossible in our day and age to, to go to every single person in creation as individuals. There is always somewhere else to go. There is always some other opportunity to love and be loved. The ministry of presence is about showing up for those opportunities. Showing up and being present in places that might seem uncomfortable. Showing up in places that might seem other for you. Because if we're not present working for justice, in our communities in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no guarantee that there will be anybody else showing up. That doesn't mean there won't be others. So join beside those who are already working for justice in our communities and offer that grace of presence to the ministries that are ongoing. For justice delayed is justice denied. That is something that we remember, especially going into tomorrow. Juneteenth recognizes the three years that it took after the Emancipation Proclamation for the slaves in Texas to be free. It recognizes the, the importance of justice coming swiftly for one another, because for three years after we legislated freedom, there were still those who were experiencing slavery. We don't know the stories of one another unless we are in relationship with one another. If we aren't present to the needs of our community, we need to show up for one another. That's what's at the heart of this text for today. Is that as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are given the power to overcome a whole series of injustices by the love and grace of God. It's not about showing up in flashy ways or gaining recognition for the ways that we show up. It's about showing up in the ways that we're able to. As I prepare for this 
next week, I am mindful that we are in a different place as a denomination this year going into annual conference. And as I've had conversation with folks about what that annual conference will look like, everybody has a different opinion. Everybody is carrying different anxieties. Different churches are coming to the table with different stories of hurt and harm. Different communities are coming in different places than they have been before. Where previously they may have been worshiping in a grandiose sanctuary, now they're worshiping in the back room of a chamber of commerce in Albertville, Alabama. Or worshiping in the art studio on the main street of Anyana, Alabama. Or worshiping out and among the community. We all come to these spaces by different roads. And the hard reality of the moment that we sit in is that there is a tension of both <coughs> welcome and rejection. That while I stand before you as a queer clergy person ordained in North Alabama, there are others in other places that have been rejected. <coughs> There are others in our communities here in North Alabama that are still waiting. Justice delayed is justice denied. And the only path towards justice is if we're willing to be present in the midst of the discomfort present in communities that we may not feel are ready to accept us. I've tried to leave North Alabama twice now. <laughs> once for Boston and once for Tallahassee. Both of those times they didn't work out for very different reasons. Instead I find myself back in this space. This very red state as people say, being surprised each and every day by the amount of work that is being done towards justice. Yeah. Surprised by the number of voices, whether it be in Woodlawn, Eastlake, Abbeville, West End, or even in communities over the mountain, or in communities in Albertville, Alabama, or communities in Aniana, or in Gadsden, or in Pell City or in Tuscaloosa, or in Florence. Throughout our state, there are communities stepping up and saying, we want to love all people. Whether they're young or old, gay or straight, trans, non-binary, or somewhere else in between. There's room for all of us at God's table. Amen. There's room for all of us at this table. As we come to communion today, I invite you to remember what you were called to do, who you were called to be, the love that you were called to share. <clears throat> I invite you not to think solely in one mindset or another, of one group or another, but of all of those that are hurting, all of those that are in need of knowing that there is grace and love for all. All we have to do is be willing to go and be present.
time of reflection is 21.30 in the Faith We Sing book, Smaller Socks Cover. It is the summons. Please stand as you are able and with us we sing 21.30.
As we come now to this time of Holy Communion, let us first start with singing together, Let Us Be Breath. It's number 2260, and, and it should be bookmarked, and you're the faith we sing. If you would, sing together. <laughs>
come at the direction of the ushers. If you would like to be seated, for serve where you're seated, please just let us know and we will come to you. But as you come forward, you will receive by intention to just receive a small piece of bread and dip it just in the light, lightly in the juice and consume both together. If you would, come as you are able. Because I'm bad with instructions that Emily gives me, we're going to sing it a third time. <laughs> <laughs> Let us sing together.
we prepare to go forth from this place, let us join together and sing our hymn of sending. Number 664 in your hymnals, sent forth by God's blessing. If you would stand as you are able. adaptation of words from Bob the Drag Queen, <laughs> of all people. Recently I started wearing a purse and carrying that around, and my wife told me to go confidently, purse first, in Bob the Drag Queen's words. I encourage you to go grace first, entering every room and every dwelling that you find yourself in with grace and departing in the same. Go forth by the grace and the love of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.